Only CBS Atlanta News asks the tough questions tonight at 11. Powered by 790 The Zone, this is the CBS Atlanta Sportsline SEC Preview Show. Presented by your Greater Atlanta Hyundai dealers. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the SEC Preview Show on CBS Atlanta. I'm Guy Rawlings, and this is 15-year veteran from the NFL, Wayne Gandy. Of course, you also played for the Auburn Tigers. And, you know, week to week, we've been seeing a lot of points being scored. Mm -hmm. This is not your SEC, the, the, the conference you played in back in the day. No, it isn't. Uh, you know, the fun and gun came in with Steve Spurrier, and teams started throwing the ball around a lot. But if you watch the teams now that are back on top, LSU, Florida, Alabama, uh, those teams, even South Carolina, they're playing D and running the ball like the old SEC. One of the teams that has been scoring a lot of points until last week, <laughs> University of Georgia. What happened? You couldn't have seen that coming against right. South Carolina. They just dominated Georgia in the first half. Well, this has kind of been going on with Georgia all year. They start slow, and then the defense does enough at the end uh, to shut the opponent down. Uh, South Carolina, excuse me, goes out early, gets up big. A. Sanders returns a punt. Um, Connor Shaw. Marcus Lattimore go out, they start early, and the defense carried them home. Mm -hmm. Georgia with a bye week, uh, and I must say that the saddest part of the story was the story with um, Aaron Mary's house getting egged. Mm -hmm. That is no place in sport. But uh, when you go out, that team got dominated. That Georgia team got dominated for 60 minutes on the field. But how can they come out so flat in such a huge game? Well, I don't know if it was so much as them being flat or it was South Carolina being at home and wanting to seize this opportunity. First time they've been ranked this high in 28 years, the South Carolina Gamecocks. It's 28 years. Michael Jackson's Thriller was hot 28 <laughs> years ago, and this is the first time they've been this high in 28 years. Well, South Carolina's defense was just dominating throughout, especially their, their, their front their front three, front four, mm -hmm. and the linebackers are just killing them. Shaq Wilson, DJ Swearinger, but this defense starts up front with Davion Clowney. He gave Aaron Murray no room to breathe, and then his friends decided to join the band, Devin Taylor, uh, Kelsey Quarles, and this guy. South Carolina defense at times looked impenetrable. They, uh, Georgia couldn't run the ball, yeah. and as I said last week, two of the top two tailbacks in the country, Keith Marshall, Todd Gurley, none, none effective against this defense. And wow, Steve Spurrier has to be happy about the kind of defense that his team is playing. You're exactly right. But it's not over yet for the dogs. I mean, they can still, if they can run the table, they can still be in the national title picture, at least talk. Yeah, if you, if you wanted a bye week, mm -hmm. and whether it's high school, college, pros, the best thing is to be able to go out and halfway through the season take a break and readjust. And as you've seen uh, last January, Alabama raised the flag with one loss going into the national championship game. And this is a look at their schedule. You see at Kentucky, that should be a gimme. Florida could be a tough one. Ole Miss, Auburn, Georgia Southern, and Georgia Tech. Florida really is the only tough one in that schedule. Yeah, when you look at the schedule, Florida being number four, being the, you know, the cocktail party down in Jacksonville. <laughs> and then you can never overlook when you have your in-state rival in Georgia Tech who here and there shows that they can play great football. That's very true. Okay, LSU. In a similar situation because they could still they could w play their way back into the national mm -hmm. title picture as well after their loss. Uh, no, if they don't, don't find an so? offense. I'm, I'm waiting on them, Zach Meckenberger, to find any kind of offense. Uh, you have to take your hat off to the LSU defense. When you can go on the road, especially somewhere like a, the Swamp, and hold a team to 14 points, you would think you can go out and win a game. Yeah. Uh, LSU's. Uh, offense has been non-existent. This is not the first game they disappeared. Uh, they played Auburn, they disappeared. Uh, they barely scored a couple of points against Townsend. Uh, so if they're going to take on this type of South Carolina defense, right. they're going to have to put at least 17, 21 points on the board. Seven points can't beat me and you, really. You got <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like you said, South Carolina has been dominating. Mm -hmm. We know that from watching the George game. But uh, you know what? Also, Steve Spurrier knows it's hard to win in the SEC on the road, and they have to go to Death Valley. Now, we hadn't talked to our team about the, the stadium too much yet, but they, they know it would be loud and crazy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we've won in front of 90,000 before. I was just thinking most of our guys were in the swamp two years ago, and uh, just about all of them were at Georgia last year. 
Uh, so big stadium, big crowd. Uh, we've won there before, and certainly we've lost before. So we we should be ready to compete as well as we can. And LSU's defense is going to have their hands full with Marcus Lattimore. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the key. Can Marcus Lattimore get the running game going for South Carolina? Because when you won't go on the road, you want to minimize your throwing the ball. LSU, 21-game home streak is on the line. 300, rather, three straight 100-yard 100 games, uh, 100 games for Mr. Lattimore. He can get the job done. When we return, we'll take a closer look at a huge week in the SEC as number one Alabama takes its show on the road to face the Missouri Tigers. Talking about Alabama, uh, I think, you know, we all know the number one team in the country and they're very deserving of that ranking. Um, they, got, uh, they got great players and um, they're dominating their opponents. And I think it's for two reasons. Uh, they have great players and they co they're, they're very well coached. And that being said, we're excited about uh, having uh, the number one team in the country come here and play in Mizzou. And uh, we're going to work real hard to play our best. The number one team in the country will be playing on CBS tomorrow. That is our CBS game at 3.30. They'll be facing Mizzou at Mizzou. But we're, he's talking about how, they're, how successful they are as the number one team in the country, mm -hmm. also number one defense. Has any other conference played tough defense like you see in the SEC? No, it starts on defense. They recruit defense. Uh, they take their best players, whether they're on offense, and put them on defense. Uh, SEC has always took pride in their defense and their running game. That's what we were always known for, and that's, that's what's still going on now. You're going to see a lot of that uh, tomorrow when uh, Alabama faces Missouri. And, uh, again, that is the CBS game. I don't see Missouri even scoring tomorrow. No, uh, Alabama is Alabama, <laughs> and they're playing that type of ball. Uh, when you watch this game, uh, A.J. McCarron, one of, uh, Alabama is one of three teams that haven't thrown an interception this year, yeah. which means that he's never putting his defense in a bad situation. Mizzou, uh, for half there when they played Georgia, we thought they were going to make some noise. Still haven't gotten their first win in the SEC, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to still be on their target you know, list, trying to get it off their bucket list. But uh, when you're talking about the number one team in the land, I can't really find a weakness with this Alabama team yet. Maybe down the road, but I don't th think Missouri has the talent. I think you're right as far as where are the weaknesses. I mean, first of all, 16 sacks for the season, perfect in the red zone, and no interceptions. All right. Well, you don't turn the ball over. You play great in the red zone, and you can play defense. They call you the number one team in the country. <laughs> You're exactly right. That's well-deserved. And Mizzou, uh, again, it's going to be tough for them. Uh, their starting QB, James Franklin, is out, and he's replaced by QB Corbin Burke Stresser. He's going to be stressing. <laughs> and he's a, <laughs> he's a redshirt freshman. Right. Uh, and to start off playing against the number one team who's going to be licking their chops off of a bye week. And, you know, you're always more energized after the bye week. And a coach like Nick Saban is definitely going to have them focus for this game. They better get the stre stretcher ready <laughs> for Burke Stresser. <laughs> All right, Florida facing Vandy. And uh, the Gators coming off a huge win versus LSU. But, uh, you know, the concern here is the trap game because they got South Carolina coming next week. So, you, you know, they, they usually beat Vandy. But how do you avoid that letdown? Uh, usually is being nice. I keep telling you, you're a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, Vanderbilt hasn't beat Florida in 24 years. 1988, I think I was in high school. Uh, Florida is playing winning type football. They're playing defense, like I said earlier in the SEC. That's where it starts. They're running the game. The leading rusher in the SEC, Mike Gillensley, the senior running back, getting it done, got it done against LSU. Uh, and I co uh, Coach Will Muschamp, mm -hmm. all he has to do to win this game is to get his team to focus on this week and not next week like you alluded to about South Carolina. Florida is up six spots in the polls from 10 to 4. I know that makes you happy. That does. <laughs> yes, it does. Mississippi State quietly at 5-0, and ranked number 19. They are facing the Tennessee Vols. And, yeah, 5-0, and but who have they played? They really haven't played anybody. Yeah, Jackson State, Troy, South Alabama. Uh, this is going to be tough. Tyler Bray, I call this the battle of the Tylers. Tyler Russell, right. uh, Tyler Bray for uh, Tennessee. The best team that Mississippi State has faced offensively this whole season. All right, when the SEC Friday Night Preview Show gets back, we'll take a look at the rest of the slate in the conference. And there were changes made on the flats. We'll talk about that next.
All right, Mr. Gandy, let's run through the whole conference schedule. Auburn at Ole Miss. Who you like? Uh... Go Tigers. I have the field goal with my Auburn Tigers. <laughs> Be true to your school. Number one, Alabama at Missouri. That is a CBS game tomorrow afternoon. We all know what's going to happen there. Florida, well, you never know. Well, I think it'll be a little tighter, but I do think the Gators will prevail. Okay, Kentucky at Arkansas. Arkansas gained a little confidence last week beating up on a so-so Auburn team. Uh, I'm going to go with Arkansas. Top ten matchup between South Carolina and LSU. Carolina big, South Carolina big in this game. I think that this is going to be the statement game for that defense, and uh, I'm intrigued to see Marcus Lattimore against, run against that team. Okay, Tennessee at Mississippi State, ranked 19th in the country right now. I'm going to take Tyler Bray over Tyler Russell going with Tennessee. Okay, and, and Texas A&M and, you know, number 22 versus number 23, Louisiana Tech. That should be a tight one. SEC. We got to go with the SEC. Always go with the SEC no matter who they play. <laughs> when in doubt, go with the SEC. All right. Georgia Tech, mm -hmm. midseason changes there. You know what? They've been averaging 31.7 points per game scoring, right? Mm -hmm. But they're giving up 46 points per game, at least in the last uh, three-game span where they have three straight losses. So changes had to be made defensively. Yeah, in total defense, they're 90 out of 120 wow. FBS schools. Uh, I've never been a big uh, believer in firing a coach during the season, but when you look at this, like you said, 46 points a game over the last three games, uh, it's tough not to have to cut some heads, as we used to call it, mm -hmm. uh, to try to get people to start perking up and playing better. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do this week uh, under new defensive coordinator Charles Kelly. What kind of changes do they need to make to get, get it right? Sometimes you just need to simplify. Sometimes you need to just go out, pick two or three defenses, and let people play ball. Sometimes you can be too sophisticated and, and complicate things and not let your talent win out. Well, they're off this week, so they get two weeks to work on it, so that's probably a good thing. Yeah, I'm quite sure that's why they picked this time to let Coach Grow go. Um, I'm quite sure he'll pop up somewhere else. Uh, coaches just keep that itch going, don't they? Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> hey, we about out of time here, so don't forget about the SEC wrap-up tomorrow night after Bama, Mizzou, Wayne Gandy, Guy Rawlings. Have a good night. Have a nice Saturday. From New York, the greatest city in the world, it's the Late Show with David Letterman. Tonight, John Goodman, Jeff Hoffman, and me. Jamie Jensen with Allison Crowe, plus Bob Schaefer and the CBS Orchestra. And now the last clean cyclist. <laughs>